have a baseball card collection. Now, I just started collecting baseball cards, and I have eight baseball cards. But you know what? I traded with a friend. I traded some of my baseball cards for some of his stamp collection. I need to give him three of my baseball cards. So these are the three I'm going to give him. And we can see that we have five left. Now, in Mortensen Math, we have two ways that we can show subtraction. One is that we can show that we have eight right here. But we have to give our friend three, because we owe our friend three for that trade with the stamps, right? So I can remove them. The other way I can show this, let me grab that runaway block, is by turning the blocks over. We use this side that's hollow to represent O. So this is what I have. This is what I owe. And I can write, we have eight, we owe three. And what does that mean? Well, these are the three that are going to be taken away, right? Those three will be taken away. It's very clear that we have five remaining. Let's take a moment and look at one of the smiley face subtraction books. Remember, subtraction books are yellow. And we can do the same sorts of things here that we did with the addition books. We can start out by having the child build a problem. Here, we have this many, and we owe this many. Here it's shaded to show that it's what's owed, and here it's hollow. Well, let's see, we have three, and we owe two. This is the one with the smiley face. Let's build the bottom one. We have this many, and we owe this many. We have five, we owe one, and here it is. Now, sometimes children get tired of handling all these individual little blocks. So they may do something different. Let's look at page two. On page two, instead of grabbing those four separate blocks, they may start to pick these up. And that's OK. When they're ready to start using them, let's let them use them. So here we have four. We owe one. That's this one. And they draw their smiley face. I hope you can see how this program works together. They start out by counting. Think for a minute about a young child, a five-year-old. If you were to ask a five-year-old, what is math, what would they say? They'd probably say numbers, right? And they're fascinated by numbers. And what do you do with numbers? You count them, right? We define, Morton's, we define math as just counting in Mortensen. Why do we do this? Because if we make math something very basic, something that children can really understand, they have no fear of it. And they go on to discover the power, the logic, the beauty, and the pattern of mathematics. Let me give you an example. Here's another topic. Think of geometry. How can we define geometry as counting? Well, what shape is this? It's a square. How do you know it's a square? One, two, three, four. You count the sides. Well, is that all that makes it a square? The sides have to be equal, right? How do we know the sides are equal? We can measure them. And measuring is just a fast form of counting. Now, there's one other thing that makes this a square. It has right angles, angles that are 90 degrees. How do I know they're 90 degrees? I measure them, again, a fast form of counting. So we look at math as just counting and define it that way. 
and you will see as you work with it how this unifies our topic. Let's take some time now and look at some other fun things we can do with place value. I want you to get out one of the hundreds kind and five of the tens kind and three of the units kind. Okay, now look at how simple this is. Here's this number, and you know what I can do with my cards? I can pick them up, put them like this, and the child can see that that's the number 153. Some other fun things that you can do are putting these up and then asking the children, how many is this? It's three. What kind? The units. How many here? Five. What kind? Tens. And we have to put our zero there. How many here? One. And it's the hundreds kind. Now, in our books, when you see numbers written this way, you'll see them with plus signs at first. You know what? This is called expand in notation. Expand in notation. You know, when I taught seventh grade, I taught expand in notation. And we did do some other sophisticated things with it. But can you see that this way of writing our numbers, and here I've just color coded it and done it as if the blocks were out there first, this way really helps the child internalize those concepts of place value. And they can see the blocks. I could tell you story after story about children who might have had trouble with place value. And then they see the blocks, it's simple. Or a classroom where they were supposed to have 35 lessons on place value. And yet in 20 minutes, the basics were covered and the rest of the time can be spent for internalizing and going beyond. Let's leave this up here and do something else with it. We have out this many. Now, let's get out this many. Right, we need one of the tens kind and two of the units kind. Now, what happens when we put those all together? Right? We're just going to add these numbers. And let me write it the way that you're going to be seeing it with the plus signs in between. We just put it together. And what do we have? Five units. Right? How many of these? Six tens. And how many of these? 100. And the other thing we can do is, how many of these kind? Five. How many of the tens kind? Six. How many of the hundreds kind? One. 165. Remember what I said at first about children learning language? that they hear all these words, and think about it. They don't start out by just hearing two-letter words, adjectives, right? They don't start out by hearing those two-letter words, and then the next year or the next few months they get to three-letter words and then four-letter words. They get the whole smorgasbord, right? They get to hear these long words. They love to say Tyrannosaurus Rex or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as if it were one word. They love that. What do you think about these large numbers? 
As a small child, it gives them some sense of power to work with these large numbers. And can they do it? What was required to do this addition problem? All you have to do is be able to, yes, count. And here we are doing some problems that maybe they might have waited, you know, a little longer to do. But this is so much fun for them. Once they master these concepts, they can go to thousands, ten thousands, hundreds, and hundred thousands, and so forth, and enjoy it.